The secret of my success has nothing to do with me, it's just timing. The British theatre changed and the 60s came and then, then the working class took over. I'm here with Michael Caine, who really doesn't need any introduction. It's just such a pleasure to have you here in our studio Thank and you. talk about your film, Youth, which got a standing ovation, and I loved this movie. It is um, so life-affirming. Uh, sure is, yeah. Right? What about this character? You, you play a, a retired composer uh, and conductor. What, what drew you to it? Well, for me, it, it was a thing of, if you look at the film and you're young, the character says, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be all right when you get there. But you can live happily with unhappiness. That's mm -hmm. what he says. And you can live to be old if you're lucky. Because the, the, the alternative to being old is mm -hmm. to be dead, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have a director, writer, who calls the movie Youth. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm 80, 82 years old. He said, I want you to do a film for me called Youth. I thought, what, I must have a small part in this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you were nominated, what, what that experience was like? Oh, it was extraordinary, because yeah. it, was, it was so unexpected. I was in a picture directed by Woody Allen called Hannah and Her Sisters. I hadn't expected to get nominated, so I'd, I'd, I'd accepted a movie when mm -hmm. the Oscars was on. I didn't take any notice. And I not only got nominated, I won. Yeah. Yeah. And you weren't there. And I wasn't there. And my wife rang and said, you won. Well, I just, w there's a lot of movies here, and I saw this movie, uh, uh, Legends, about the Cray brothers last night. It started Tom, at Tom Hardy. Isn't Tom he a Hardy. brilliant actor? He's brilliant. And, Fabulous. And I was just thinking, you must have been around in London when the Cray brothers were... Oh, I knew them very well, yeah. You did? Well, I come from the same area. They weren't terrifying or anything unless you did something, you know, so I used to, I used to not do anything when I was with them. I just mm. drank the booze and... Mm -hmm. I would smiled mm -hmm. a lot. And a lot. <laughs> if you could have picked any any one of your films to go into like a time capsule, which which one would it be? I would say Alfie, because you took a, you took a very thick Cockney accented guy, and a very immoral guy. You know, I mean, he was seducing women all over the place, um, and and I think that was a sort of turn in British cinema to see mm -hmm. a guy like that on the screen. But it was very funny because the director rang me and said, "We want you to post sync." the lines. I said, what for? Where's it going to show? He said, America has bought it and nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> so if you see the American version of Alfie, it looks like I can't do a Cockney accent because I had to make it a little bit more. First thing you do is of course slow it down. Cockneys speak very quickly. Right. All working class mm -hmm. people speak very quickly because no one listens to them. The more powerful you get, the slower you speak and the less hand gestures you use. Mm -hmm. You don't use hand gestures because people pay attention to you. That's very interesting. Yeah. I did not know that.